What is up, everybody? Andrew Mahoney here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. I guess I'll, I'll show you guys my face. What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here, Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Thank you guys all for being here. The happy Thanksgiving. It's it's just the Thanksgiving Eve, Turkey Day Eve. We're all very excited. I have got a matchup to commentate over. We have got an exciting round one. Melvin Davila on the left versus Kyle Neal on the right. I believe that Kyle has got some sort of Mewtwo deck for us and not exactly sure what Melvin has brought to the table. I did see Kyle tinkering with his Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX deck. Definitely excited about that. Hopefully you guys are all having a great evening. Exciting, for, Excited for Thanksgiving tomorrow. I'm going to be traveling home to visit my family. I'm going to be in Baltimore with Natalie for the weekend. So we're not going to have any stream on Thanksgiving, of course, tomorrow. And we're not going to have any stream on Friday. But I will be back Monday night for some more Pokemon trading card game online action. It looks like Kyle is going first here and is playing a Mewtwo deck. Featuring Mega Lopunny, who we see in the active. He's got a tag call. Going to be searching his deck for either a tag team Pokemon or a tag team supporter. I think he does run a couple copies of Cynthia and Caitlyn. The tag call engine is definitely a powerhouse search engine that we have been seeing in competitive decks, making its way into all sorts of different archetypes. We got it. On display in Mewtwo and Mew here, but we've also seen it in Picaram, seen it in Arceus, Dialga, Palkia, and uh, just an all around very, very powerful search engine for tag team decks. Spent a long time today opening packs of Cosmic Eclipse. It's pretty exciting. Got to head on over to Darium's Pokemon. Shout out to any Darium's fans out there and cracked some packs with Darium. That video is gonna be going up on YouTube uh, this week, I believe. And also, we are gonna be uploading all of those singles that I opened today with, uh, with Darium to fullgroupgames.com. So if you guys are looking for some sweet Pokemon trading card game singles uh, from Cosmic Eclipse, we got a lot of the newest cards all uploaded now to fullgroupgames.com. And the Black Friday sale is going on, so we have a 10% off everything on the site sale going on right now for Black Friday. If you guys are looking for some sweet Pokemon deals for the holidays, just thought I'd shout that out real quick. Also tonight at midnight, meaning that if you're watching this on YouTube, it means now, okay? Thanksgiving through uh, Thanksgiving through Monday, we're gonna be having a sale on fullgripcodes.com as well, 10% off all PTCGO codes instantly delivered on fullgripcodes.com. Sweet. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, we've got Kyle using that giant hearth. We see that big golden giant hearth. Beautiful. To search out two fire energies from the deck, discarding a Reshiram and Charizard. And we'll see if Kyle has got the welder to accelerate these fire energies onto his board. See him giving the deck a good shuffle. And he selected Guzma and Hala off of his tag call, but he's going to be using Cynthia and Caitlin to discard a fire energy and draw three more cards. We see him get a bunch of tag calls, but the tag calls cannot search out Welders. Welder is not a tag team supporter, so he is just stuck with a bunch of tag team cards in his hand and not a lot of ways to search those out. It looks like this is actually going to be a Mewtwo mirror as we see Melvin also appears to have some very Mewtwo oriented looking cards in his hand as well. So this should be a pretty exciting match with some big one hit KO action going back and forth. We see Melvin taking this opportunity to use that giant hearth that Kyle put into play to discard his Naginate LGX, search out two fire energies of his own. And he's got 
Jirachi in the active. I don't see any Jirachis on Kyle's side of the field, and I'm wondering if maybe he is not a fan of the Jirachi version. We did see a lot of the successful Mewtwo decks from the Latin American International Championships did run Jirachi for that Stellar Wish ability. Also, relying on the Jirachi engine does alleviate the pressure to put quite so many Dedene GX on the field. And as we know, Dedene GX is a pretty big liability in our current standard format because of the number of Megalopunny and Jigglypuff GXs we see in top decks. I mean, the, the card is being run in Mewtwo and Mew decks. It's also being run in Reshiram and Charizard deck, decks, as well as Gardevoir and Sylveon. It is being played in quite a few decks, and Jumping Balloon easily takes knockouts on big tag team Pokemon, especially when there are Dedenne GX in play. We see that Melvin does have Welder, but is forced to Welder onto his Jirachi. That is not optimal, and it looks like Melvin is unable to find himself a tag team Pokemon, even with the Stellar Wish. We saw him searching for a Cherish Ball. This game could end quickly if Kyle has a way to switch that Megalopunny and Jigglypuff and we see Kyle going for a Guzma and Hala. Guzma and Hala will search out that weakness guard energy from the deck, but does Kyle have a way to switch? He has an escape board, and it looks like Kyle does have that Solgaleo in the discard pile, so he can use Perfection to copy Turbo Strike, and that is going to be a quick win from Kyle Neal. Unfortunately, Melvin not able to find the basic Pokemon that he needed to get that game started. And Kyle is going to advance to 1 0 here at the Fulker Games League Tournament. Got yeah, Kyle Neal here, hot off his round one win at the Fulker Games League Tournament. How you doing, Kyle? Good. A lot better than uh, last two weeks. Oh, yeah. I mean, got to a pretty decent start there, but uh, we saw Melvin, unfortunately, not doing yeah. too much on his side. So Mewtwo and Mew, we saw this time with a bunch of tag team, tag call cards in it, uh, tag call supporters or tag team supporters and the like. Tell us a little bit about how uh, you built your deck and are you running Jirachi in your version of Mewtwo and uh, why do you like the tag call engine in the Mewtwo deck? Uh, I'm just trying it out. I am running Jirachi. It's okay. pretty much uh, one card off from the second place list. Sweet. Um, what, from the Latin American International Championships? Yeah. Okay, very cool. So, I saw the, uh, you got, what, the Weakness Guard energy is searchable with Guzma and Hala, and then is there also maybe a Rainbow energy in the deck? Yeah. And you can uh, use that to copy Greninja, right? Mm-hmm. Which is pretty important. Yeah, I run the Water energy too, but uh, it's easier to search out with Guzma and Hala for the Rainbow. For sure. And uh, what is the one card that you decided to change for today from the second place list from Latin American International Championships? Uh, I took out the Stealthy Hood since Mimikyu doesn't seem to be that prevalent. Uh, and I put in uh, another Cincy on Caitlyn. Very cool. So just another supporter. I think that makes sense. Uh, from my experience, I'm not sure that the one copy of Stealthy Hood is really going to win you the Malamar matchup anyway. No. Uh, yeah, there's a lot that could go wrong there, I think. Um, now, it is just running the weakness guard energy. How many weakness guard energy are in the deck? Two. Two. And that's instead of Jirachi GX, right? Yeah. And that makes sense, because that way, you know, Malamar can usually turn off the Jirachi GX anyway, but they're going to have a harder time dealing with the weakness guard energy. Yeah, and it's another GX for Low Puff to rack up the one shot. That is true. Yeah, so Mega Low Punny and Jigglypuff. So, would you say that you think that you're confident that Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team is going to have a good weekend in Daytona, or what do you think its prospects are looking like? I'm um, pretty sure we'll probably see it in top eight, if not the winner's table again. Ooh! All right, so thanks we could uh, be seeing Mewtwo and Mew all the way at the finals. I personally think that Malamar is going to be making a little bit of a comeback uh, this weekend after a poor performance at uh, Latin America. So. Well, we'll see. I mean, 
hasn't made a top eight since I started playing. So <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, that is true. That is a little bit of heat. There was uh, what I think Michael Catron finished top eight with Malamar at the first regional of the year. Uh, I, and that's when I wasn't really keeping track. So. All right, yes, there was one tournament, one regional, the first regional of the year. But uh, we'll certainly see. I think Mewtwo and Mew definitely a top-tier deck in this standard format. There's no doubt about that. And uh, good luck in the rest of the tournament, Kyle. Thank you. Getting ready for round two of the Poker Games League tournament, we've got Nick Hunter on the left versus Holden Cheeks on the right. Not exactly sure what Nick has brought to the table for us this evening, but I know Holden has got his Reshiram and Charizard tag team GX deck, and he is uh, definitely a big fan of the Reshizard deck. He pilots it very well, and you know, is uh, no stranger to the top tables when he's got Reshiram and Charizard in his hands. Nick has been holding on to Picaram and has been playing Picaram pretty consistently for the last few weeks, trying out different builds and different uh, and different cards to try and make Picaram work in this standard format. Now Holden does play Megalopunny and Jigglypuff Tag Team GX in his deck. So if Nick is playing a more traditional build of Picaram, that could be problematic. But I do think that Nick is uh, favoring the non-Dedene version of Picaram, which means that he is just going to be using the... Ah, he's not playing Picaram. Do I have... Is this a Reshizard mirror? Pretty sure I've got these players on the right side of the board. I'm pretty sure that is Nick Hunter on the left. Oh, yeah. This is a Blacephalon versus Reshizard matchup. All right, round two. The Fulker Games League tournament, we've got Nick Hunter on the left playing... What appears to be Blacephalon GX or some sort of fire deck with Naganadel could also theoretically be Reshiram, I suppose, against Holden Sheiks playing his Reshiram and Charizard deck featuring, we see, Ninetales and Sebstrika. Uh, thanks so much, Brian, for the sub. Brian, hit me up with your details in a DM, and I'll get you that sticker pack sent out for 12 months. Subbed to Tricky Jim. Appreciate it, Brian. Holden looks like he's going to be using Pokemon Communication to get a Dedenne out of his deck, that nice rainbow rare Dedenne. Probably looking for a day day change to get this matchup going. Dena Generate is gifting a sub as well. Welcome, Link. Thanks so much, Dena Generate, for the gifted sub supporting the channel. Rock on, Dena Generate. Thank you so much. Tenth gifted sub to the channel. And welcome, Link. One 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 one. We actually, yeah, got a good point in the chat. This could be just a Turtonator Naganadel deck. Good point. This. Fire deck on the left might not actually feature any other attackers other than Turtonator. I have heard of a Turtonator deck. You weld her to the Turtonator and then use Naganadel, charge up energy, and that's all you do. A lot of times we see Turtonator as kind of a tech attacker in some of these fire decks, but I think that potentially Turtonator is is the real deal in this uh, Turtonator deck we see on the left with Nick Hunter. And I know that Nick definitely is a fan of more rogue type decks, so definitely would not surprise me to see a Turtonator focused deck on Nick Hunter's side of the board. I'm going to go ahead and get that Turtonator up. Let's take a look at on the overlay. Turtonator's explosive jet attack does 50 damage. Times the amount of fire energy you discard from your Pokemon. So Naganadel obviously brings that fire energy back from the discard pile turn after turn. And as long as you can keep accelerating energy onto your Turtonator, then Naganadel can kind of, 
you know, rinse, wash, and repeat. We do see uh, Naginate on the active, and I believe Holden just flipping there for his Jirachi. He's going to use Naginadel's Ultra Conversion ability to draw three cards. And yes, this is a Turtle Nag deck, okay? The second Turtonator reared its head, and now I have every reason to believe that this is just Turtle Nag. All right, so that's pretty cool. This entire deck can be searched out with Mysterious Treasure. I think that's neat. You can use Mysterious Treasure to search out Turtonators. You can use Mysterious Treasures to search out your Psychic type Naganadels. You can use Mysterious Treasure to search out your Dragon type Naganadel GX. So that's pretty cool. And we do see Nick finding the Jirachi. Switching into Jirachi using Stellar Wish. Uh, I think that with the way that Nick's deck is constructed, we can expect Nick to really just want to take a few kind of high profile knockouts. This deck should operate pretty similarly to a Blacephalon deck, maybe like a baby Blacephalon deck, I'm thinking, where you just try to use your welders you know, intelligently and just bide some time to take some big knockouts with Explosive Jet. We do see a second Jirachi making its way down onto Nick's board, going in with another Stellar Wish. And yes, there is the third Turtonator we see in that Stellar Wish hand. This deck is just chock full of turtles. I had a lot of turtles, a lot of turtles in the deck. So Nick is going to need to get multiple Naganadels into play in order to continue to power up Explosive Jet turn after turn. Uh, definitely is an energy hungry deck. I want to see Nick evolve that Ditto into a Naganadel from Lost Thunder, but we see another Naganadel GX coming into play, which makes me nervous because with two Jirachis on the board, I think Nick may have some trouble streaming the energy he needs for explosive jet every single turn so that could become tiresome for his welder dependent deck i did see there's at least one pal pad in the list so uh so nick does have a way to throw welders back into the deck and the cool thing about the giant hearth that holden is playing is that hold it or is that Nick is going to get to use that as well? The melon, thanks so much, the melon, for the Twitch Prime sub. Appreciate the support. Let's get some vanillishes going in the chat. Thanks, the melon. Holding going in with a stellar wish. Gonna take a look at the top five cards of his deck. See if there's anything useful he finds there. Wow, four. Fire Energy, and a Giant Hearth. Easy pick for Holden. He will take the Giant Hearth. Holden does not have a Ninetales set up on his side of the field. He does have a Ditto and a Ninetales in his hand, though. So he can use the Ditto and evolve into Ninetales next turn, which could allow him to start targeting down the Threats on Nick Hunter's side of the board. We see that Ditto make its way onto Holden's bench. And he's gonna giant hearth away his own giant hearth. Figuring that, you know, he's gonna get decent usage out of this, it's fine. Uh, he doesn't really maybe expect Nick to counter the giant hearth. Holden's going to grab two fires. We'll see if he's got a welder to attach those somewhere. He's got a very interesting board position cooked up and is not going to be taking a knockout this turn. Doesn't have the switch in his hand. We see Nick's Jirachi stays asleep as well. Wondering why Nick Hunter's Ditto has not evolved into a little Naganadel yet. We do see some more energy coming out of that ultra conversion and then nick deciding to use the giant hearth after 
the Ultra Conversion. Uh, I'm not sure if Nick has a switch. He may have to go in with the Stellar Wish to try and find an escape board or a switch to potentially launch an attack. I'm also wondering what the Gust situation is in Nick's deck. Nick's Turtonator deck certainly wants to target down big threats on the opponent's side of the field. I mean, ideally, Nick would like to knock out both the Denny's and maybe then two non-GXs so that he would only have to take four knockouts to win the game. And we see the Welder going on to Naganadel. Nick does find a switch. So he can switch into his Jirachi on the bench, Stellar Wish again, and potentially launch an attack with his Explosive Jet this turn. Now something devastating uh, about Turtonator is that it, even though it, it takes fire energy, he does not... Um, he does not hit for fire weakness, right? So it still takes two discarded energies to knock out the Jirachi that Nick is facing down. We see Nick accelerating those energy from the Welder this turn onto Naganade LGX. So maybe we can expect to see a Venom shot somewhere down the line. Discarding Fire Crystal does make me a little bit nervous. I think that you know, these, these fire energy are going to be very valuable to Nick uh, as the game wears on. But we'll see. He does have a lot of fire crystal in his hand right now. And not a lot of energy in the discard pile. That is sure to change as soon as he starts attacking with explosive jets, however. And here comes the switch I believe he's going to be using to Stellar Wish again. Yes with his second Jirachi before maybe eventually launching an attack. He's got another Mysterious Treasure and a Turtonator. Reset Stamp and Palpad. I uh, would not be surprised if Nick does not run very many, if any, Gust cards in this deck. Maybe just relying on Turtonator to knock out whatever is in the active position. And then maybe relying on Magnate LGX to snipe the rest. Thank you so much, Horizon Fire, with the gifted sub. Appreciate it, Horizon Fire. First gifted sub of the channel. Thank you so much for supporting Tricky Jim. Let's see, so Nick is going to select the Welder off of Stellar Wish, bench a Poiple. Now, he's got a Naganadel in hand, so I'm wondering why he hasn't evolved that Ditto yet. What is he saving the Ditto for? instead of charging up. I like Nick's decision to discard from the active Turtonator. I think that's heads up. I think clearly Nick has some sort of ideas for this Ditto Prism Star, or else he would have just evolved the Naganadel in his hand. I'm not sure at all what he's going for. Holden Immediately gets the Nine Tails and is going to be bringing up that Naganade LGX with the two fire energy on it. And using Day Day Change, Holden at this point has got three Rainbow Rare Dedene GX on that bench. Take a look at that bench. That is a blinged out bench. Loving it, Holden. And the energy in Holden's deck. I mean, he has got a, a sweet looking Reshizard deck. Holden looking to take a big knockout on this Naganade Alley. He's going to need to discard five energy to take the one hit knockout from his board. But he does have Victini Prism Star right there on the bench as backup for when he discards all of this energy. Victini Prism Star and its infinity attack will be able to. Put those energy back into the deck. And we see him using Welder to accelerate energy onto the Victini Prism Star. He's got that as a safety net to lean on. Next turn, he only needs to discard five energy so he can keep 
one fire energy on the Victini. But it looks like he's... I think I like keeping one fire on the Victini so that you don't even need Welder. I think this Turtonator is going down uh, for sure. I mean, Nick's hand is pretty good. He's got two Jirachis as well. I would say that Nick has a pretty good shot of knocking out this Turtonator. He just needs a Welder and two Fire Energy. With the Giant Hearth in play, pretty easy to negotiate. So I think Holden makes the correct call. Discarding the Fire Energy off of the active Turtonator. Keeping the one Fire on the Victini. Collecting two prizes with Explosive Jet. The ball is back in Nick's court. He has got to fight his way back to stay in this game. He's got plenty of Fire Energy, Welders, and Turtonators in his hand. Which is basically what it seems like this entire deck is made up of so that definitely adds up nick going to go into his deck and we'll see he actually does play nine tails so uh this makes a lot of sense i think nick was trying to potentially save the ditto so that he could evolve into team up nine tails to use the nine temptations ability to bring up Dedenny's on Holden's side of the field. But it looks like Holden was just able to make quicker use of that Nine Tails, Nine Temptations than Nick was. And it makes sense. And I see now why Nick would be so careful with that ditto, knowing that Nine Tails is his best bet to take out threats on Holden's side of the field. I think at this point, yes. Nick does want to go for the Pokemon communication and start to catch up a little bit, taking out to Dene's. Nick immediately evolves into the Nine Temptations, Nine Tails. And I think without a doubt, we are going to see a gust this turn. I think Holden, uh, I think Nick, in order to win this game, needs to gust up Holden's Victini Prism Star. I think that is the best bet for Nick. To go to four prizes and keep Holden from shuffling all this energy back into the deck. I think Nick would actually be in a great spot if he can take out that Victini Prism Star. We'll see if he sees the play or if maybe maybe he's uh, maybe he's a little bit too greedy and goes for the Dedenny. The Victini is correct. And he sees it. Nick Hunter bringing up that Victini Prism Star. I think this is a great play from Nick. And now Holden is in real danger of running out of energy in this game. In order for a Holden to have any chance, I think Holden may have to accelerate onto... A Reshiram and Charizard, a tag team Pokemon. It's the only way that Holden can hang on to his energy, I think. And we see Nick taking this opportunity to count. How many energy you got in the discard, bud? It looks like quite a few. That is disastrous. I saw maybe nine. And it looks like Holden is going to have to bench Jirachi this turn. At this point, Holden has... A heat factory in his hand. I don't really see any viable attacker. Maybe there is just Reshizard. But I think Holden is trying to figure out if he's even got enough fire energy left in the deck in order to attack with anybody. I think he was all in on attacking with Victini Prism Star. And this could just be the break that Nick needed to come back in this game. Holden's going to go digging for that welder off the Stellar Wish. However, he can't really afford to welder yet. He needs to wait. Yikes. He needs to wait until he gets a bench space freed up. He 
He's checking his hand one more time. Holden has access to Pokemon. He's got Pokemon communication and a Jirachi in his hand. He can get whatever Pokemon he wants. And taking a minute here to deliberate. I think the Palpad is the correct choice. And we're expecting the Turtonator to maybe take a knockout this next turn. But at this point, Nick is on a two-turn clock. He could very easily wrap up this game in two turns where Holden uh, is nowhere near winning this game in two turns. He is far off at this point. Missing this knockout this turn is going to be absolutely devastating. And Holden has to pass with this Jirachi in the active. He cannot afford to accelerate on Turtonator. That will run him out of energy. We do see Holden opting to play the Heat Factory, drawing into a switch and a welder. He's got a welder, but I don't know if he can afford to attack with Turtonator again. He's almost out of energy. I think he's only got two left in deck. The only attacker that Holden can attack with is Reshizard. I think that's it. So Holden seeing this, realizing that he cannot waste his energy on Turtonator again, even though he did have the knockout. Holden was not responsibly able to attack with Turtonator this turn. Absolutely devastating. There's no point in even playing the switch as far as Holden is concerned because he knows that with enough fire energy, Nick Hunter is going to be able to target down whoever he wants on Holden's side of the field using Ninetales' Nine Temptation ability. And I think that we're probably going to be seeing that come into play this turn as well with Nick having two fire crystals in his hand absolutely uh, an insane amount of access to fire energy right now he's got Holden's entire board available to him and he's got these Naginadels that can just charge up every single turn making it so that he can very easily get enough energy into play to take these big knockouts. And we see the Naginadel is just stockpiling this energy turn after turn. He only needs to get rid of four in order to take the knockout. Losing one off the active Turtonator. I think if I'm Nick this turn, I like just discarding all the energy off of Turtonator. Assuming that the Turtonator is going to get knocked out at this point. It looks like Holden is going for the Rush Ram and Charizard. His only hope with Nick only having two prizes remaining. I don't think Nick is running, or I don't think Holden is running a reset stamp either. So he doesn't have the option to limit Nick's hand. And this Rush Ram Charizard would have to go the absolute distance, which is looking less and less likely as time goes by. Holden going to use Stellar Wish and look at the remainder of his deck. He's only got four cards left in deck. I'm not even sure if he's got a Fire Energy in his hand to use Flare Strike next turn. I think that this GX attack might just be the last attack from Holden that we see. No, there is one Fire Energy left, so Holden does have enough to Flare Strike. the following turn. He's going to use his GX to knock out this Turtonator. And we'll see. Does Nick have a way to get four energy in play with a Turtonator? I see the Turtonator. I see the Welder. I see the Fire Crystal. Nick Hunter needs to charge up twice, Welder onto the Turtonator, attach for turn, and then get two five ener or two fire energies to bring up the Dedenne. It is quite a bit, but Nick's hand is huge. 
Gonna start things off with a heat factory. Finds another fire energy. I believe he's only got one fire crystal available to him, so he can get a few energy back this way. And he should just have game. I think he's got, he's one energy short of game. He can welder two energies onto the Turtonator, charge up two onto his Naganadels. And he missed it. If this Stellar Wish, unless there's something that I'm missing, I think he's one energy short right now. If this Stellar Wish nets him a fire energy, he can use Nine Temptations to bring up to Denny for game. And he misses. But Holden does not have the energy in deck to punish Nick. So Nick is going to be able to sit with whoever he wants active. And Holden will not be able to punish it. Nick is one energy short of game. He's one energy short of being able to knock out the rest of and Charizard with Explosive Jet. He's one energy short of being able to nine temptations up to Dene GX for game. And we're potentially seeing Nick get a little bit punished for that early discard of the Fire Crystal. We did see Nick discard a Fire Crystal early on. And we see he's got one Fire Energy and one... Fiery Flint left in the deck. That's it. So if Holden did somehow have a gust, which he doesn't, he's out of energy. Holden does not have it. If Holden could gust up this Turtonator, though, Nick would be in a losing scenario. Because he's only got one energy left in deck. And, well, I guess Nick could get that one energy and then accelerate the one in deck with the one in hand. Something like that. We see Nick does have a reset stamp. I don't know if it's worth playing. But I think Nick is definitely still in control of this game, even though he's not getting the knockout this turn. Knocking out that Victini Prism Star on Holden's bench was huge. And I think Holden started the Victini Prism Star, if I'm remembering correctly. Holden would have never benched that Victini Prism Star before it was time to play it. So either Holden started the Victini Prism Star, or he drew into it very early and had to use the Denny. Either way... Holden did not have a choice in benching that Victini Prism Star. He had to bench it, and then Nick quickly punished him for using very energy-heavy attacks early on with Turtonator by knocking out the Victini Prism Star, the only fire energy recovery that Holden plays. We see Nick just taking some quick stock of Holden's resources. Holden drawing three cards off of the reset stamp making sure that Holden is in fact short on fire energy and not able to take that gust knockout. Holden is in a tough spot. If he uses flare strike to knock out the active, he walks into a game losing scenario from the Turtonator and we see that happening right now. Nick has got the Turtonator, energy, and we'll use Explosive Jet for game. Nick taking the game with Turtonator and Explosive Jet. Absolutely wild match. Very cool rogue deck from Nick Hunter. Going the distance and taking down one of the best decks in standard format right now. Awesome stuff. We're going to get Nick Hunter back for an interview in just a moment to talk about his success with Turtonator and Agonade. I didn't think I would be saying that tonight, but very exciting gameplay, very exciting deck, and congrats to Nick on a win, a well-earned win, with a pretty cool rogue archetype. We'll be right back with more trading card game action here at Fulgur Games in just a moment.
All right, no time for an interview. We're getting right into the third round. This is an exciting match, though. I am stoked about it. We've got Nick Hunter on the left again with his Turtonator Naganadel deck against Andrew Barlow, who is playing Baby Blacephalon. Saw this matchup getting paired up when the pairings went live, and I had to see it play out for myself. I know that we're all wondering, who is going to take this game? Is it going to be Nick with Turtonator and Aganadale, or is it going to be Andrew Barlow with Blacephalon? Let me hear it in the chat. Who do you think is going to be the top non-GX deck featuring Welder in this matchup? Is it going to be Baby Blounds, or is it going to be Turtonator? Really excited to see how this matchup goes. Baby Blacephalon is definitely a force to be reckoned with, finishing the top 16 of the Latin American International Championships. But Turtonator, the newcomer, Explosive Jet, taking knockouts turn after turn. Turtonator does have to discard three fire energy from play in order to take a knockout on a Blacephalon. Blacephalon has to discard three fire energy from hand in order to take a knockout. Uh, it seems to me like Baby Blacephalon might just be a more consistent version of the Turtonator deck where the Turtonator deck has to run Naganade LGX to draw cards. Andrew Barlow's Blacephalon deck gets to run Pidgeotto in order to help draw cards. Pidgeotto is a non-GX Pokemon, meaning that it is going to be less of a liability on the bench. So, all in all, I think that Andrew probably a little bit favored here, but I had to see this match play out for myself. Nick has got a great starter in Jirachi. It looks like Andrew's going to be going first, finding himself two Pidgey, and I believe he's got the turn one Professor Elm's Lecture, which is extremely strong with the Clefairy Polka Doll, what, the Lily's Polka Doll on the bench. I always want to call it Clefairy Doll. Lily's Polka Doll on the bench, meaning that if he wants to sack that for a turn, I think that Nick would probably have a difficult time playing around it. We see Andrew grabbing a single Pidgey and two Pidgeotos off of the Elms Lecture, meaning that he is going to get to start using airmail on the second turn of the game, going for a double airmail turn two. Thank you so much, Abyssal Wolf, for that sub. Can't believe it's only been three months. Feel like you've been here forever. But thank you so much, Abyssal Wolf, for all the support in such a short time. Awesome stuff. Andrew Barlow shuffling up now. Got a great start and a promising looking turn two. And he's going to retreat into that Lily's Polka Doll for sure. He's got a couple of welders in his hand. Now he just needs to find an Ultra Space to get him to Blacephalon. That's a weird thing about Nick's deck also, is that if he plays down the Ultra Space in order to help set his own deck up, then he's actually helping Andrew Barlow to find his attackers, which is exactly what he doesn't want to do. Nick Hunter plays down a giant hearth or something like that. He's also going to be playing into Andrew Barlow's setup by helping him to find those fire energies he needs from his deck to use Welder onto his Pokemon. So really, you know, Nick would be doing Andrew a lot of favors just by using cards that help him to set up, which is not what he wants to do. We do see... Nick Hunter does just get the turn one welder, though, and has Vulpix, which is awesome. Uh, three energies onto the Turtonator, and I'm sure that Nick has absolutely no plans of hitting into this Lily's Polka Doll. With the Vulpix in play, we know that Nick is definitely going to be looking to take some pointed gust attacks, and I think that it's safe to say with this... Ultra Space here, you know, Nick does have more options to set up Pokemon. I think a Poiple would be a good grab. 
is to get two Poiples into the deck. Nick's hand is small, but his start is promising. And I think that if Andrew is not able to keep pace next turn, uh, Nick could be favored if he is able to take the first meaningful knockout. Andrew Barlow only plays four Blacephalons with no way to recover them. Andrew Barlow probably also only plays four Welder with no way to recover them. So if Nick is able to get this deck operating smoothly, I do not think he should take this knockout. Oh, well, there it goes. Okay, I actually think, I guess it makes sense. He gets the doll out of there. He only has to wait, waste one energy to do it. And he puts pressure on Barlow by taking away that free retreater. So I guess the knockout does make sense. Even though he's not taking a prize for taking out the Lily's Polka Doll, he takes away Andrew Barlow's free retreater and puts pressure on him to make him do something, which is really tough because the free retreater uh, makes all the difference in the difference between Andrew getting an attack launched this turn and maybe not getting an attack launched this turn. We see Andrew Barlow waste no time playing that Ultra Space, getting the Blacephalon out of his deck, evolving both of the Bench Pidgeotos, and we're going to see a couple of air mails. Easy pick there, fire and fire. Second one, Flint and Blacephalon. Uh, you easily take the Flint. The Blacephalon could be searched out with Ultra Space. And now Andrew Barlow has a ton of fire energy, uh, access to fire energy in his hand. I think if you just use this Fiery Flint, discard a doll and a fire energy. I really hope he doesn't discard this welder. That could be disastrous. If he discards the welder, then, ooh, this feels really bad. I don't like that at all, unless there's a pal pad in the deck. Even if there's a pal pad in the deck, I think any other choice of card would have been a stronger choice. Getting rid of a welder in a deck that only runs four welder feels like a compromise that, uh, that should not be made. But Barlow letting a welder go, and then it's going to use welder to accelerate onto his Blacephalon. My problem with this line of play is that if Barlow does not hit a switch here, which, oh my gosh, sure, he hits the switch right there. Uh, I was going to say, if he doesn't hit one of his two escape boards, which he just found one, um, then he's not going to be able to take a knockout on this Turtonator this turn. Now Nick Hunter is the one getting punished in this line of play when I thought Andrew Barlow was the one that most certainly looked like he was going to be getting punished because Nick is better established. The odds of... Andrew Barlow hitting that escape board are very low. But sure enough, Andrew has all the pieces he needs, even with two welders in the discard pile on turn two. He's going to be taking a very pointed knockout, leaving Nick with not a lot going on. Nick, uh, I thought it was a little bit greedy for Nick to take this knockout. Uh, it was definitely greedy for Nick to take that knockout on the Clefairy Doll. I didn't think he was going to get punished for it, but Andrew Barlow absolutely punishing him for it. Opting to hang on to that Clefairy's Polka Doll instead of the second welder. And here is a baby Blacephalon Fireball Circus for knockout. Nick with only a couple cards in hand and no way to draw, feeling the heat here. He's only got one route. He can use Ultra Space and get himself a Naginate LGX, and then he has to Stellar Wish into a Mysterious Treasure and then draw cards off of the Stellar Wish. Nick would be in a much better place. Had he not gone in with the Turtonator, but now he is feeling the burn of losing that first attacker. And I said the winner of this matchup would be the first person to take the most meaningful knockout. And by Nick 
giving up his Turtonator to Andrew. Andrew was the one to take the first meaningful knockout. And that is going to put Andrew Barlow on a course to win this match that I think Nick is going to really struggle to fight back from. Nick is going to use Pokemon Communication, and I assume we're going to see a second Naginate LGX come out of the deck. And Nick is going to evolve into Naginate LGX and use Naginate LGX to draw some cards. But at this point, the damage is already done. I don't think that Nick can draw into... It would literally have to be... No, he cannot draw into any combination of cards off this three cards that are going to save him. Even if he drew Double Fire Welder, he does not have a Turtonator because his Turtonator just got knocked out. If he drew one Fire, one Welder, one Turtonator, he's only accelerating one energy. This looks like a very unfortunate draw for Nick. Nick's still going to take this turn to Welder, I believe, onto his Naginate LGX. Though if his Naginate L, or I guess, Poiple. If his Poiple gets, I guess his Poiple is safer than Naginate LGX because he knows that Andrew Barlow probably only plays uh, Great Catcher. Great Catcher cannot target down non-GXs. So I think Nick getting out Naginate L is saying like, okay, maybe I'm going to be using nine tails to target down Pidgeotos. And here's Vulpix going for an attack, and it's a heads. Uh, I've got to read what that Vulpix does real quick. Let's let's see here. Nick, what kind of what kind of shenanigans are you pulling with this Vulpix? This seems like a very, very bold play. But I like it. All right, what do we got going on with Vulpix? Tail Whip. Flip a coin if heads the defending Pokemon can't attack during your next turn. <laughs> oh my gosh. It makes it so the Blacephalon cannot attack. Check this out, chat. That is even better, actually, because it means that uh, Andrew Barlow is not going to be able to gust around it. The Vulpix Tail Whip. My gosh, check that out, chat. Uh, we get to see a Tail Whip come into play. That Blacephalon cannot attack. And Andrew Barlow just discarded his other Welder, uh, which means that he only has two Welders left in deck. And I don't think Andrew Barlow has any way to recover those Welders. So... We'll see if we find a pal pad at some point in this list. There is another welder right there in his hand. Um, maybe Andrew Barlow uses that, but I think Andrew Barlow would be in a horrible position if he had to retreat this Blacephalon. There's no way that that is reasonable. I mean, that would be so brutal, retreating the Blacephalon into a new Blacephalon. I think we might see it. I mean, honestly, I think Andrew Barlow might just do it. Yeah, he's going to welder onto the Victini for sure. And we're going to see Andrew Barlow counting his energy. He's going to attack with Victini. That's three welders in the discard pile. Nick Hunter does not have to do a lot to win this game. Andrew Barlow is running himself out of resources, retreating this Blacephalon. He will get to manually attach to the Blacephalon as well, which is good. So it's only one energy away from attacking. But Andrew Barlow only has one welder left to win this game. So if Nick can just put any pressure... on the defending Pokemon, uh, then he is going to be A-OK. -okay. We see Nick going in with Heat Factory to draw three cards, finds a Turtonator in his own Heat Factory, 
He's got a welder too, but he does not want to welder for one. He needs another fire energy. I don't believe he has it. I think he's considering going in with a stellar wish. He cannot gust this turn either. I think we might see Nick Hunter go for an Ultra Conversion to draw some more cards off of the Naginate LGX from Unified Minds just to see a few more cards out of his deck. See if he can whip up a response. And here he goes with the Ultra Conversion. Three more cards. He's got plenty of fire energy, so he can welder now onto a Turtonator, which I know is something that he wants to do. But he also needs to find a switch. He does still have the three cards from this welder. And he gets to Stellar Wish. If he doesn't find an energy off of this or if he doesn't find a switch or an escape board off of the Stellar Wish, that is going to be devastating. But we see Nick actually opting to use the Pal Pad before the Stellar Wish. I think he should go for the Stellar Wish first. So that he increases his odds of getting the switch card. I think he desperately needs to take this knockout. Unless he's already got a switch in hand that I can't see. But I don't see one. And he's suiting up the fire energy already. Really tough spot. Let's see Nick going to go for a Pokemon communication. Always a little bit of a feel bad. The Pokemon communication does not actually thin the deck. Uh, it trades one for one. And he is going to go for the Ditto Prism Star. Ditto Prism Star does give him an out to evolve into Ninetales. I think that stall on the Stellar Wish. If Andrew Barlow gets any more mileage out of this Victini, he is going to be in a real good spot to win this game. We'll see Nick Hunter considering any last plays before he goes for the Wish. Stellar Wish. Does not find a switch. Uh, I think this is probably going to be game. Nick not able to take any knockouts so far. I mean, he did take one knockout, but it was on a Clefairy doll for zero prizes. Andrew, very low on resources, but I am quite concerned that Nick is not going to be able to punish him. Because Andrew Barlow is going to get another knockout with this Victini Prism Star. Just putting in all the work and Victini Prism Star not supposed to get multiple knockouts and Andrew Barlow top decking the great catcher might even get an opportunity to skip around Nick Hunter's turning point turn and we see Andrew counting the amount of energy that he has in deck and using Ultra Space getting himself Blacephalon out of the deck. I think Andrew has a pretty clear route to win this game now. It doesn't matter that he only has one welder left in deck. He's going to be just fine. And it looks like Andrew's going to shuffle that Clefairy doll back into the deck. Bring that Blaby Blacephalon into the active. And he's got a Jirachi with an escape board too. Oh, Peter, you're right. Turning point is your own prizes. Thanks. Thanks, Peter. <laughs> I always think the turning point is uh, the opponent's prizes. Sometimes I wish I had a co-commentator to, you know, help me when I was making gaffes like that, but. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my bad. Barlow looks like he's just going to be discarding one, knocking out the Jirachi. Oh, turn it, McSun. I, I, I didn't see. I didn't see you got you were on it too, McSun. Sorry. Appreciate you too, McSun. Thanks for the correction. Got you, bro. That's my bad. I think Nick Hunter is a little bit too far behind at this point. Andrew Barlow is on his three prize turn, but as my chat so gracefully pointed out, thank you, chat. Turning point does not get <laughs> does not get put into effect until you are on three prizes, not your opponent. Oh, Ultra Beasts. Oh, there's so much going on there. So, Nick is going to be taking a meaningful knockout this turn. That's for sure. But the fact that Andrew Barlow gets to hold on to this Victini Prism Star means that he just has that option to get another, you know, kind of free attack without having to use Welder. So, Andrew Barlow has just enough resources left in deck to be able to win the game. If he can take a knockout next turn with Victini and then find his final welder in deck with that great catcher to knock out the Naginate LGX, he will be able to take game. <laughs> Peter in the chat asking, how often do I make a mistake? Make that mistake uh, all the time. <laughs> Literally all the time. I don't think that I have... Uh, I don't think that I have ever remembered that Turning Point is on my turn, my prizes. I think I have I have botched that up almost every single time, <laughs> which is uh, which is fine, you know. Okay, some things are hard to remember. You feel me? Nick gonna use Reset Stamp. On Barlow and take out this baby blue cephalon with his turtonator. And it is time for Nick to shake and bake here. This is the this is game time. Barlow can take a knockout with Victini Prism Star, but will he be able to find his final welder? He's got three airmails and a stellar wish. That is a lot of cards that he gets to see. And sure enough, off the first airmail, there is that welder. It's going to be the game-winning welder eventually for Andrew Barlow. It's all he needs. Just one more. And we see him looking to thin his deck with Fiery Flint. Before proceeding with any more airmails, I do like this from Andrew. And then we're going to see him proceed with another airmail. And he's got a Stellar Wish. We did see that he was able to pull that Ultra Space off of the top. I think this entire game is different if Nick just waits one turn in order to attack. If Nick just waits and leaves his Turtonator on the bench and doesn't knock out that Lily's Polka Doll, I think Nick wins this game. I think Nick's deck is more versatile. I think Nick's deck has more options to recover welders than Andrew's deck does. Has more attackers, right? Andrew Barlow only has four attackers, five attackers in his deck. You know, theoretically, Andrew Barlow can run out of attackers. Whereas Nick has all of his Naginatels are attackers, all of his Ninetales are attackers, and all of his Turtonators are attackers. So I think in a real, you know, War of Attrition, 
you know, Nick should win. But again, letting that Turtonator go down for no prizes, bringing it into the active position really hurts. Meanwhile, Barlow might have cooked up the knockout on that Naginate LGX, which would be absolutely checkmate. If Andrew Barlow takes a knockout on that bench Naginate LGX this turn with his baby Blacephalon on the bench, he's going to put Nick in a position where everything in his everything on his board gets knocked out by Victini, but it looks like He's just going to go up with the Victini and take a knockout on this Turtonator. I think that's fair. 120 damage to the active. Now Andrew Barlow has used his final welder on that baby Blacephalon. This is an opportunity for Nick Hunter to pull this game back. If Nick can gust up and knock out the Blacephalon on the bench, Andrew Barlow might not be able to deal enough damage with Victini Prism Star to take any meaningful knockouts. So I'm interested to see if Nick Hunter sees this play. He's got the welder. Are we going to be targeting down the Blacephalon? I think we have to target down the Blacephalon in order to have any chance at all. Uh, Nick is also going to need that escape board, which finally we see making his way into the end as an escape board. I think I'm still a little bit concerned um, about Nick's ability to win. But if Nick can gust out the Blacephalon and knock it out, and gust out the Victini the turn after and knock it out, then all of a sudden Nick, I think, can still win this game. I mean, look how much energy he has in play. He has all the energy he needs in play. He just needs to start gusting. And I think that Victini Prism Star in the active is not going to do it. Um, this next turn, he just shuffled all his energy back into the deck. So we'll see what Nick decides to go with. He's using Pal Pad, shuffling two welders back into the deck. He does not need any more fire energy in play this turn, that is for sure. Does Nick go for the gust on the Blacephalon? Uh, it's the only way he doesn't instantly lose. I think, you know, we can see it from a bird's eye view right now that, you know, with Andrew's resources remaining, this is the only way out. I think Nick also needs to chill on his deck. I mean, his deck is very thin. He's got not a lot left. He just shuffled some welders back in, but he don't need the welders. I mean, really, all the energy he needs to win the game is in play right now. And Nick absolutely has to gust, or I think he loses, but he's not going to. Ah, uh, no, no. And Andrew Barlow has just got win in hand. Nick, I think, had the double fire. But Andrew Barlow, I think, is going to have plenty of draw, plenty of ways to find enough fire energy in order to knock out that bench snag and 8 LGX. So we'll see. Andrew Barlow's got two great catchers in his hand. He's got a fire crystal as well. That's good for three fire. I think he's got one fire energy in his hand as well. No fire in his hand. So he needs to find five fire, six fire energy. He's already used Heat Factory. First air mail, there's one. 
He knows he needs second air mail. There's two. He needs five. And he's got, or he needs six. He needs one more. That's his third air mail. He's only got one fire crystal, so he's got two fire energies, one fire crystal. That's five energy in his hand right now. He needs one more energy, and he has one stellar wish to make it happen. If Nick, Hump, if Nick Hunter escapes, escapes losing the game this turn, he could theoretically not lose. But Andrew Barlow has no welders left. None. So, unless he plays Palpad, which I haven't seen, Andrew Barlow is going to have to use Stellar Wish to go for a Fire Crystal or a Fiery Flint. And he misses! He misses! Andrew Barlow does not have the Gust Knockout on the Naginato. However... He does have this. He could gust it up. He already used Heat Factory. He could gust it up and hit it for 200. And then gust it up again and blazer it for 10. Uh, I don't know if he'll see that. But he's so far ahead that he can afford to do that. I think we might see him go for the double gust. I think that would be the smartest play for him to make. I think you put down a new Blacephalon, attach a fire energy to it, and then gust and blazer it for 10. And then the following turn, yes. I think, well, no, you don't blazer for 10. You gust and you hit for 200 first. That's technically correct, yes. And then the next turn, you go for 10 with the new Blacephalon. And we see Andrew Barlow actually going for the 10 first. This is another way he loses the game. He did it in reverse order. You need, you need to do the 200 first. And the reason you need to do the 200 first is because Nick can gust up the one with the two energy on it and knock it out. Oh, geez, chat. Things are getting real stressful out here. However, I don't think Nick has any switch cards left we see Nick only actually has one fire energy in the discard pile so he's going to gust up the Blacephalon he sees it and then has to welder to the active he's only got a couple cards left in deck though he's very close to decking out chat but I I don't know. I think Nick is going to deck out. He's got the attack with Turtonator. Next turn is turning point. But I think Andrew Barlow at this point is out of welders. He's out of welders. He's out of energy. Andrew would have win if he did the 200 damage first. And then gusted for the 10. And now they are on time. Andrew Barlow has turned zero of time. Are they gonna tie? Come on. Andrew Barlow going for the Heat Factory again. And Nick only has three cards left in deck. Andrew Barlow being turned zero means he only gets two more turns to win this game. I think Nick has managed to yank out a tie potentially. But I don't know, Andrew Barlow can just pass. I don't think Nick has a way to knock out that Blacephalon on Andrew Barlow's bench. So now Andrew Barlow just gets to wait. And then is gonna be going for game next turn. So I think Andrew Barlow still in a winning position. All he has to do is manually attach. And Nick has to go for the welder. He's going to lose.
And he realizes it, so he does an infinite amount of damage to the Clefairy doll and decks himself out in the process. Oh, what a crushing match. Andrew Barlow emerging victorious with baby Blacephalon. And he did have all the resources he needed for game on the following turn, but a tight match for sure. And both players uh, nearly being able to come out on top in the end. Uh, with some with some pretty wild plays happening in the middle. Andrew Barlow taking it. In round three of the Fulgrip Games League Tournament. We will be right back with the fourth round out of five in just a moment. All right, gearing up for the fourth round of the Fulgrip Games League Tournament. We have got Andrew Barlow on the right with his baby Blacephalon deck against... Kyle Neal on the left, who is going to be playing Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX. This should be an interesting match. Mewtwo and Mew can really overwhelm the competition if it is able to get up a quick cross division GX using Mewtwo and Mew to copy Espeon and Deoxys Tag Team GX. And really just eliminates all of the Pidgeys from Andrew's side of the field. Andrew Barlow is just going to be looking to sustain himself, get set up, hopefully avoid a quick cross division, and use Baby Blacephalon to take two quick and easy knockouts on big tag team Pokemon. Uh, in the end, it's all going to be about who gets a better start. If Kyle is able to get a turn one welder to a Mewtwo and Mew going first, then I would definitely be scared uh, being in Andrew Barlow's shoes. However, if Kyle is not able to get a turn one welder and kind of fumbles getting set up, then Andrew Barlow can quickly overwhelm these tag team Pokemon with powerful fireworks, what, fireworks bombs, attacks? What? <laughs> Fireball Circus, that's it. Fireball Circus attacks with Baby Blacephalon. So we'll see who ends up going first. The players are flipping now. This is our second to last round. One more remains at the Full Grip League Tournament. Make sure to check out FullGripGames.com for all of our Black Friday sales going on. We've got 10% off everything on FullGripGames.com right now. FullGripCodes.com going on sale tonight at midnight. So Thanksgiving Day, FullGripCodes.com is going to be going on sale as well. 10% off FullGripCodes.com site-wide. So thank you guys all so much for supporting the shop. Hopefully you're all having a nice Thanksgiving holiday and enjoying time with friends and family. I'm excited myself to go home to Baltimore and visit my family this week. Um, really love visiting home, going with Natalie. Should be a great time, for sure. These players are looking to win this round, which advanced to 4-0, put them in a great spot to win the entire tournament. These two are the only 3-0 players in the field right now at the Full Grip League tournament, so advancing to 4-0 would pretty much guarantee them uh, a win because they would have some of the best resistance in the room, even if they end up losing their final round, their opponent's resistance would be very strong because they had played against all winning players up until this point. So everybody's, you know, everybody's opponent's record is guaranteed to be relatively strong. And it looks like Kyle is going to be going first. This is huge for Kyle playing the Mewtwo deck. If he can get a turn one welder I do expect great things from Kyle's deck this matchup as I said previously can get out of hand though uh, I've seen it happen I've had it happen to me on PTCGO a number of times where you're playing the baby blue cephalon deck you're thinking that you're going to be favored against this tag team deck and then they just come at you with the heat of a Quick cross division GX. They can knock out three Pidgeys with cross division GX and then some extra damage. It's absolutely crazy. Perfection, a very strong ability on this Mewtwo and Mew. 
which is going to be barred from copying Pokemon V. Pokemon V are the latest craze coming out of the Pokemon trading card game, the newest function of the Pokemon trading card game. Uh, they are going to be debuting in our Sword and Shield sets. Sword and Shield base set comes out in early February with new Pokemon V and Pokemon V Max. Mewtwo and Mew, great at copying EXs and GXs, cannot do anything with Pokemon V. I said before, this is exactly the situation Andrew Barlow wants to avoid. Kyle getting a turn one welder onto his Mewtwo and Mew tag team GX. And it's exactly what Kyle was able to pull off. Taking a look at his hand, going in with Cherish Ball. I think Kyle just needs to see as many cards as possible on these first and second turns. If Kyle can get a turn two cross division and knock out three Pidgeys, I think this game is pretty much a wrap. Andrew Barlow not being able to utilize airmail would be huge. And we see Kyle realizes that going straight for the Espeon and Deoxys tag team. He's going to want to find a way to put that into the discard pile so that he can copy it with perfection. I mean, I guess he could always just bench it too, though you do not really want to have that liability there on the bench. We see Kyle has got a Rainbow Energy 2, satisfying the psychic requirement of Espeon and Deoxys's cross division attack. And Kyle going to flip to see if his Jirachi stays woke. It does not. Barlow's turn. He's got a Clefairy Doll and a Welder. Uh, I do expect before Barlow plays the Welder, even though he's getting the Blacephalon out of his deck, I do expect Andrew Barlow to Stellar Wish uh, in search of a Professor Alum's lecture. Try to get a lecture first. Welder turn one is not the ideal turn one supporter for this baby Blacephalon deck. Professor Elm's Lecture helps set up all the Pidgeys, get Pidgeotto into play, so that Barlow can start using airmail as early as the second turn and finding those valuable fire energies that he needs to pull off big firework circus attacks. So we see Barlow doing everything correctly using the Fiery Flint to thin the deck first, pull all those fire energies out before the Pokegear, and we see, sure enough, first card off the Pokegear is Elm's Lecture. So he's got that Lecture, and we can expect to see him go for that Lecture to get Pidgeys into play. It is a little bit nerve-wracking, though, with all that energy already on Kyle's Mewtwo. These Pidgeys could be disappearing very quickly, and the sad thing about it is that even if Kyle doesn't get the turn two cross division, maybe if it's a turn three cross division GX, then... Andrew Barlow's Pidgeotos still only have 60 hit points. 60 hit points is not enough to survive Cross Division. With Cross Division being able to place 20 damage counters, that's good to knock out three Pidgeotos on the bench. Taking three prizes and limiting Andrew Barlow's ability to draw cards. And... Uh, and draw into those game-winning cards that he needs. Andrew Barlow shuffling up. He's got two Pidgeys and a Pidgeotto in his hand. You can see he's got plenty of fire energy as well for the next turn. And with Jirachi in the active, getting to use Stellar Wish. He's got a great start. I don't think I see Welder in Kyle's hand yet, so he does not have everything that he needs for the turn two. Uh, cross division, I think that he's expecting to maybe hit a welder off of this Jirachi. But then he needs a switch card too. So he's still got a couple of pieces left to put together. And I think that I would be very surprised to see Kyle actually get that, that cross division off. 
And this should be a turn pass from Andrew Barlow after these two Pidgeys get placed onto the field, unless he decides to hold them. And it looks like he actually is deciding to hold them. Andrew Barlow saying, you are not cross-dividing me for three prizes, bro. I think that's an interesting call from Barlow. I do think that eventually he will have to bench those Pidgeys, though, and cannot hold on to them forever. The longer Andrew Barlow holds on to the Pidgeys, the more opportunity he gives Kyle to set up. Uh, like I said, I don't even think, you know, Kyle might not even get an attack this turn, let alone a cross division. I mean, he doesn't have the welder in hand. It is scary to look at, though. If you're Andrew Barlow, you're like, oh, he probably just has it like that because he had it like that turn one. He might just have it like that turn two. You see Kyle is discarding what appears to be Naganadel GX off of Mysterious Treasure. He's going to get another Psychic Pokemon out of the deck and put it into his hand. He's got another Mewtwo and Mew that he's able to build up. I think it'd be nice to see a Turbo Strike for Knockout. If you're Kyle here, you could Turbo Strike the active Jirachi, maybe accelerate some energies onto the benched Mewtwo and Mew and try to establish a board position that could eventually gear up for that cross division but like I said I'm not sure um, not sure that Kyle is going to be able to find that switch card I mean there should be a decent chunk of switches in the list maybe also Mallow and Lana it looks like Kyle is going to discard with Cynthia and Caitlin Espeon Deoxys draw three cards he does not find the switch. He does find a giant hearth. I hope he doesn't play the giant hearth this turn. Giving Andrew Barlow access to giant hearth will just give him more fire energy in the hand, which would be very bad. Yeah, giving him an option to potentially take a big uh, what fireworks circus. Fireball Circus. I've been calling it Fireworks Circus. I've been calling this attack all sorts of crazy stuff tonight. Fireworks Bomb, Fireball. <laughs> all sorts of crazy stuff. Fireball Circus. Yes, I think Kyle would be intelligent to just hold on to his giant heart this turn. And just see what Andrew Barlow does in the next turn. Wait for more Pidgeys to hit the field. And then go for a big cross division next turn. We know that Kyle does have access to the welder now. Uh, he was able to use Cynthia and Caitlin and bring one back from the discard pile. And he also, I believe, used Cynthia and Caitlin and drew into one naturally. So he's got plenty of welders now. And with a giant hearth in his hand, he's got a lot of uh, a lot of different ways to get energy into play. I mean, he's got access to the fire energy from deck with Giant Hearth. He's got access to Welders. He's got Stellar Wish Jirachi, which is actually the only thing keeping him from attacking at this point. The fact that he cannot retreat this Jirachi. Andrew Barlow going to use Ultra Space, find his Blacephalon. And then I think that we can expect to see a Welder from Andrew. Andrew could get... A wild turn this turn. I mean, he could get everything he needs. If he is able to find an escape board and a great catcher and then welder into maybe a, well, there's the escape board. And that's what I'm saying. If Andrew Barlow can welder into maybe a great catcher, then he could take a knockout on the big Mewtwo and Mew. And if he's able to take a knockout on this Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX on his second turn of the game with only one Pidgeotto in play, I would be extremely impressed. It's all going to be about what Andrew Barlow hits off of this welder. He's already got the escape board that he needs. But he also needs to find, like I said, more energy. 
and the great catcher. Most of these people with Cephalon lists are only playing two great catchers, so it is the most different, the most difficult part of the combination to find. We see Andrew Barlow going in with the Stellar Wish, looking at the top five cards of his deck. See if there's a trainer card there that he wants. And welcome, it's Blinks asking, just getting back into the Pokemon trading card game, what is meta right now? Well, these two decks, definitely meta decks, welder decks, fire decks, decks that use fire energy, very popular right now. Rush Ram and Charizard Tag Team GX, Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX, and Blacephalon, both the Blacephalon GX and the non-GX Blacephalon from Unbroken Bonds, all very popular. Looks like Andrew Barlow is going to go in with Fiery Flint, discarding two cards from his hand to search four Fire Energy out of the deck. And then there's also Arceus Dalgum Palkia. Arceus Dalgum Palkia decks are very popular right now as well. We see Andrew Barlow being very stingy with his Pidgeys, not really wanting to uh, not really wanting to bench too many of them, knowing that Kyle's Mewtwo could take multiple prizes on them, so he's actually choosing to discard a Pidgey with the effect of Fiery Flint instead of putting it into play. Usually with the Baby Blacephalon decks, you see the Pidgeys just laid down immediately but Andrew choosing to be a little bit more cautious. We see he's got a ton of energy in play. In order, or a ton of energy in hand. And he's going on to a separate Blacephalon. But he does not find any sort of gust or anything like that. And Andrew Barlow has got the escape board, can retreat. into his Blacephalon with only one Pidgeotto in play. He is drawing plenty of energy. And it looks like he is suiting up two energy on each of his Blacephalons and is going to attempt a Blazer for knockout. And he does not hit the prize. Uh, if the prize was a fire energy, it would have been a knockout on the Jirachi, but it was not. So the Jirachi lives with Blazer only dealing 20 damage with weakness. Kyle's Jirachi does wake up, but at this point, he's got to be really nervous about putting the Mewtwo and Mew into the active. Andrew Barlow has built up his board position very intelligently with two copies of Blacephalon. We see Kyle discarding his Megalopunny and Jigglypuff with his Giant Hearth. And is going to be getting two Fire Energies out of the deck. We can expect to probably see a Welder Come down from Kyle, accelerate maybe on to his Mewtwo and Mew, and I suppose he could knock out the Jirachi and the Pidgeotto with Cross Division. That is only two prizes. You would like to see more. It looks like Andrew Barlow is getting reset stamped right now to six. Heads up call from Kyle, acknowledging that Andrew's hand was looking pretty good. And if Kyle is able to get the cross division on the Jirachi and the Pidgeotto this turn, it's possible he might not get punished. And I think that he did just draw into the escape board. There it is for the Jirachi. This is going to be a big turn for Kyle. If Kyle can neutralize the draw power of Andrew's deck. Cross Division GX, take out the Jirachi and the Pidgeotto. It could be smooth sailing from him from here on out. And he's also got an attachment to his bench, Mewtwo and Mew tag team. Uh, and then it's going to be using Stellar Wish before he retreats, picking another trainer off the top five cards of his deck, putting it into his hand. And the rest should be pretty much gravy from here. Kyle's just got to go in and hope that he does not get punished. I mean, Andrew Barlow would need seven energy in hand, and this is the disadvantage 
of Andrew Barlow not opting to go with more Pidgeys from the start is now he doesn't have that draw power to help him dig out of this unfortunate hand that he's in in order to take this key knockout on this cross-dividing Mewtwo. It's about to take the stage. Kyle using Tag Call, checking his deck, seeing what two tag team cards does he want to put into his hand. He's selecting a Mallow and Lana. It's a good choice. In case he wants to heal and switch next turn. And then Cynthia and Caitlin, always a safe bet as well. And we'll see if Andrew Barlow is able to top deck into the cards he needs for this knockout. Assuming that Kyle takes out probably the Pidgeotto, the Jirachi. I expect the Lily's Polka Doll to get knocked out with the cross division as well. But that's six plus seven. 130 plus 30 more, 160. He's going to have 40 more damage to put wherever he wants. I think cross division GX to take out um, I really I think I personally like taking out the Pidgeotto and the Jirachi in my opinion. But Kyle opts to go for the Blacephalon and the Jirachi, leaving a Pidgeotto in play. So Andrew is going to get to see two more cards with his already seven-card hand. And he's going to grow that hand size even more with the giant hearth right now. He's got eight cards in hand. And then he's going to get to see two more. I guess not eight cards in hand, seven, because he benched the Pidgey. He's going to get to see two more, though. And now with the Heat Factory, even more. Andrew Barlow could very easily draw out of this. Almost all Pokemon off that Heat Factory. That's crushing. Here's Airmail. Double Fire. Easy pick. Now he has two fire energy. If he could find a welder off of this Poke Gear, Andrew Barlow could see three more cards. And he finds the welder. Andrew knows now that he needs to welder into a fiery flint. If Andrew Barlow can use welder, find a fiery flint, and take this knockout. He's going to be in a great position to win this game on the following turn, despite the cross division, despite the early aggression from Kyle. I think weldering onto the bench feels the safest. I think it's got to be a welder for two onto the bench. I hate to do it. Welder for one onto the active is just a little bit too greedy because then if the active gets knocked out, you have to find another welder for the bench the following turn. You just have to welder to the bench and hope you literally find like double, double uh, fiery flint. Andrew Barlow would have, uh, the top three cards of his deck were all fire energy. Andrew Barlow would have gone there with the welder. He would have hit triple fire. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I thought that Blacephalon that was the flipped over prize, I honestly thought that was Andrew Barlow's bench. I am now remembering that that is a flipped over prize card. So thanks for the heads up. Trina then plays. Appreciate it. Yeah, uh, that's my bad. I was thinking that there was a bench Blacephalon. There is not a bench Blacephalon. That is a flipped over prize card that actually looks like it's on the bench right now, but it's not. <laughs> so he goes for the welder.
he does have one in hand. Okay, so he could have he could have weldered onto one in hand. Okay, all right, all right. That's not that bad then, because he did have something he could have weldered to. We're Gucci. All right. Looks like Andrew Barlow going for another blazer. That hurts. But he does bring the Mewtwo and Mew down to 250 HP, which means that it only requires five energy to get discarded in order to be knocked out. So Kyle looks to be running away with this one. Andrew Barlow does need a lot of cards in order to punish Kyle next turn and take a meaningful knockout. El Gulvich. Ice, ice baby. Just what I needed to hear. Thank you so much for the sub, El Gulvich, and for supporting the channel. I mean, Kyle taking a commanding lead in this match, still only going to be at three prizes remaining, halfway to the win. He's definitely got his work cut out for him, having to knock out non-GX Pokemon every single turn. We see Kyle going to go for another Cynthia and Caitlyn. Probably going to pick a Welder back from the discard pile and draw three cards. Finds a weakness guard energy as well as a fire. I think we're just going to start to see this Mewtwo on the bench get suited up. And we see Kyle discarding another energy because... I think this active Mewtwo and Mew is going to be using Turbo Strike to accelerate energy onto this benched Mewtwo, and Kyle probably is going to be using Mallow and Lana, you know, to switch if this Mewtwo ever takes a hit that is, you know, more than 20 damage. It looks like Kyle's actually going to take this opportunity to retreat into his fresh Mewtwo. I like this. Make it a little bit harder for Andrew to take the knockout by promoting a Mewtwo that does not have any damage on it. That way, Andrew Barlow has to discard six fire energy with Fireball Circus in order to take the knockout. Kyle getting the full effect of Turbo Charge and going to three prizes remaining. Can Andrew Barlow whip up the knockout with Fireball Circus? That is the question. He's got the escape board. He's got the bench Blacephalon. He's got the welder. Wow, he really has a lot of the pieces right here. And he's got the other welder in hand with two airmails now. Andrew Barlow definitely mounting quite the comeback with the great catcher in his hand too. Off this airmail, he's going to have the option to target down damaged Mewtwo and Mew if he needs to. Did I call that turbo charge? I meant turbo strike. Oh my gosh. <laughs> turbo charge and fireworks ball. I'm really on one tonight, man. I need to go to bed. Turbo charge. That's not the name of the attack. It's definitely turbo strike. All right. Andrew Barlow. Three airmails deep this turn. This board state has definitely escalated quickly, and Andrew Barlow is quickly making his way to the bottom of the deck, and that's Stellar Wish revealed four fire energy yo Jesse Parker with the Twitch Prime sub yo Jesse 12 months thank you so much Jesse appreciate it hopefully you have a nice Thanksgiving as well enjoy that new golden slow king crown and make sure to hit me up for some stickers next time you're by the shop I can uh, hook you up for being subbed to the channel for 12 months my dude Appreciate it. Andrew Barlow going to be using these fire crystals, bringing fire energy back from the discard pile. He has got the knockout on this Mewtwo. Uh, looks like he's actually going to be bringing up the bigger Mewtwo on the bench. And he's got Victini in his hand. He's got another Blacephalon in his hand and plenty of fire energies with a welder. 
It doesn't have another Blacephalon in his hand. He's got the Victini, though. And he has the option to take a Blacephalon off the prizes if he wants it. Plenty of outs to take this game. But I do think that... Yo, Jesse with the 200 bits. Thanks, Jesse. Busted. Appreciate it, my man. Andrew Barlow is going to be choosing to take that Blacephalon off of the prizes. He knows that his deck doesn't really quite run enough fire energy in order to take the one-hit knockout on Mewtwo and Mew with Victini Prism Star. So he's going to have to rely on Blacephalon in order to take this knockout. Kyle going to bench another Mewtwo and Mew, it appears. Got Jirachi in the active with 20 damage on it and a Mewtwo on his bench now. Only one knockout remaining between Andrew Barlow and a 4-0 record at the Full Grip League Tournament with Baby Blacephalon. Kyle suiting up his Mewtwo with the Psychic Energy, going to go in with the Stellar Wish. We'll see what he finds. He's got a Viridian. And see what Kyle decides to do from here. Viridian Forest is a nice option for Andrew Barlow to be able to fish out energy out of his deck. And could help him to find that, that key piece he needs to win this game. We'll see. I know that Andrew's Barlow... Andrew's hand is pretty much stacked at this point. He just took the Blacephalon off the prizes. He's got a lot of fire energy in the hand. Kyle, real quick, before he goes in with the attack, with Mewtwo and Mew is going to use Viridian, discard the Greninja GX, and get a fire energy out of his deck. And then we're going to see a knockout on this Blacephalon. Kyle Neal will only have two prizes remaining. Coming down to the wire in this game. But Andrew Barlow's got a Jirachi with free retreats because of the escape board. Fire Crystal, an excellent card to see right now. Can Andrew Barlow piece together this game winning knockout on this 270 hit point Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX? That fire energy is a great way to start with the first air mail. And Andrew just counting how many resources are left in his deck. He should be able to see the entirety of his deck at this point. And it is three fire energy. So he needs to count and see, do I have enough energy in this deck in order to win the game? He's got two energy in hand. Two more energy he can get off the deck. Pepin with the tier one sub. EpiPen. Thank you, EpiPen. Yo, that's what's up. Let's get some vanilla shiz going. Appreciate the support, EpiPen. Welcome to the club. So Andrew Barlow might just be a little bit short. If he's got fire crystal in hand that means he's got five energy in hand so he's considering going in with the victini prism star uh, he must kind of realize that he is a little bit short of game and needs to shuffle all his energy back into the deck which is fine uh, so long as andrew doesn't but i think andrew might be short on welders so he's saving his welder attaching to the victini prism star kyle could win this game if kyle can just use venom shot and knock out that victini prism star i think andrew barlow is out of energy 
He did not have enough energy to win this game. He's just going to use Venom Shot on the Victini Prism Star, and this game is getting out of hand quickly. I don't think Andrew Barlow can win. I think he's out of energy for sure. If he puts three energy on this Blacephalon, he's only got like four energy left in deck. And that's it. And I think at this point, Andrew Barlow potentially just waiting to see if maybe Kyle will do something to deck himself out. So you only win Andrew Barlow could be going for, or maybe Kyle is not able to take his final prize. But with Kyle with only one prize remaining, uh, Andrew's just chilling behind this Lily's polka doll. All Kyle has to do is turbo strike. And Kyle at this point knows that Andrew does not have the resources left in his deck. And Kyle is turn zero. Kyle is going to use Mallow and Lana and switch into Jirachi and use Stellar Wish. And Kyle only needs to take one more knockout. If he can just turbo strike onto a Mewtwo and Mew and then Venom shot for game, Kyle will take this match. I think at this point, it's clear that Andrew does not have the energy or resources he needs left in his deck to, to take a knockout on one of these Mewtwo and Mews. So Kyle is going to put a weakness guard energy on his Mewtwo and Mew. And so long as he puts himself in a position to Venom Shot for game next turn, he should be good to go. Instead, he's just going to pass, and I think that's fair because he's going to attach next turn and then Venom Shot for game the following turn. Kyle has the energy in hand, can retreat, and that's game. Venom shot for match. Kyle Neal bringing it back with Andrew Barlow just barely running out of resources at the end of the match. Kyle emerging victorious with his Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX deck. That match went to time, meaning that we are going to be getting started with round five action here at the Fulgrip Games League Tournament in just one moment. We will be right back with the fifth and final round in just a quick break. Players are shuffling up for the fifth and final round of the Fulgrip Games League Tournament. Thank you guys all for hanging out with us tonight. Hopefully everybody is getting to enjoy some time with family for this Thanksgiving holiday coming up tomorrow. And uh, then also gets to enjoy some sweet Black Friday sales coming up the day afterwards. We've got one at forwardgames.com happening on, it's actually, it's live now. 10% off everything on the website. If you want to check it out, forwardgames.com uh, is the place to be for your trading guard game singles and stuff. Also, forwardcodes.com going on sale tonight at midnight, Eastern Standard Time. So by tomorrow, Full Grip Codes will be on sale, 10% off all of our PTCGO codes on FullGripCodes.com. We've got Kyle Neal on the left, 4-0, with his Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team Deck against Benjamin Rodriguez on the right. Looks like Benjamin is playing a Greens Reshizard deck, I'm judging by the Custom Catchers and Fire Energy that I see there. Probably going to be a Greens Rush Ramp and Charizard deck. Benjamin is 3-1. in one. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how this matchup buffs out. 
Oh, excellent stuff, Happy Pen. Well, thank you so much for supporting the shop. Appreciate it. And it looks like Ben is going to be going first. Kyle starting to Dene GX. Ben got a Rush Ram and Charizard GX in the active position. Ben going into his deck with Cherish Ball. And we'll either be searching out maybe another Reshizard, or maybe we could see a Charizard and Breaks in. This is not a Greens deck, okay? I don't think it is anyways. I'm seeing Dedenny's. This is not a Greens version of Reshizard. This is just a Reshizard deck featuring custom catchers. So I was a little bit mistaken there. A very unique list here from Benjamin, and I'm excited to see how it works. He's got a Fire Energy to toss on to his Reshizard here, and he's got like three custom catchers in that hand. All three custom catchers he's ditching. With this Dede change, unfortunate. But, uh, you know, sometimes they gotta go. And he's got a Welder, and it appears, and maybe a Giant Hearth in his hand, so he can get the Turn 1 Welder onto this Reshizard as well, which is gonna be fantastic. Uh, for a very powerful turn two, if Benjamin's able to gust anything up. I mean, that being said, Benjamin did just discard three custom catchers, so the odds of him getting any turn two gusts probably low. I think I did see Vulpix also, and maybe Ninetales in Benjamin's deck as well when he was doing a deck search, so he probably does have that as an option to do some gusting too. Welder coming down and a draw of three. And there is a Vulpix as well as a Tag Call. And it's going to be a pass. The ball in Kyle's court now. I have to say, Benjamin definitely looking like he has the, uh, the upper foot. Going first and getting that huge Welder played. Starting in February when Sword and Shield is released, players going first are not going to be able to play supporters from their hand. So a very dramatic change to the turn one rules coming up in the Pokemon trading card game that is certainly going to affect the balance of turn ones and a lot of matchups and a lot of ways that decks get played. But here and now, we've got Benjamin Rodriguez asserting his dominance with the turn one welder for three. Three energy Reshizard capable of dealing 300 damage next turn. Benjamin is able to find himself another welder for the following turn. Kyle using Giant Hearth and searching out two fire energy himself. And we may see those get weldered onto the Mewtwo if Kyle has got a welder in his hand. Do you see Cynthia and Caitlin? There is a welder. And he's going to be dropping those on Mewtwo. Drawing three cards. Finds himself a Reshizard, a Charizard GX, I think, as well. And a great catcher. And he's not going to be able to really unlock any of his most powerful attacks this turn. Charizard's Double Blaze GX takes three, uh, six energy. Three to do 200, but six energy to do 300. And then Charizard GX's Flare Blitz attack takes four energy to deal 300 damage. So since Kyle can only accelerate three energy this turn with his manual attachment from hand and welder, he is only going to be able to ramp three energy into play this turn, capping out at Double Blaze GX 200 damage. He's not going to want to waste his Double Blaze GX on this Fresh Ram Charizard, but it looks like Kyle is going to use Great Catcher maybe to try and slow Benjamin down. And I expect we're going to see a third energy attachment from Kyle. He's just choosing, is it going to be the water or the 
uh, or the fire, and he's choosing the water energy. Benjamin, drawing his card, can he find the resources he needs to take a big turn to knock out? That is the name of the game right now. Looks like Benjamin might be locked into a Cynthia and Caitlin as his supporter for turn. He's going to use Giant Hearth, discarding a Fire Crystal. Get two more Fire Energies out of the deck. Taking a look at what else he has in the list. And I have, it's going to be a lot to ask of Benjamin's deck in order to get a Double Blaze GX with the Gust this turn. So I'm expecting... Kyle's Mewtwo to live through the turn. And I think that we may see a Flare Strike knockout on this Dedenne GX. However, if Benjamin is limited to just a Flare Strike, then Kyle could use Flare Blitz with Charizard GX and Mewtwo and Mew and knock out Benjamin's Reshiram and Charizard. So Benjamin's in a tough spot. Uh, I think Benjamin's actually a little bit safer keeping the Charizard on the bench until he's able to gust up this Mewtwo and Mew and knock it out. I mean, Benjamin has to be the first one to take a key knockout in this match in order to come up victorious. So we see both of these big tag teams just kind of jockeying for position now. And I think Benjamin is actually in a really compromising And I Jesse Parker's pointing out, did they actually officially announce the uh the turn one rule changes in the US? Um I I guess they might not have. I guess I've just been hearing it around the rumor mill so much that I've kind of been assuming that it's happening, but that might just be a rumor. But I've heard it from so many different places that I'm thinking that it's happening. All right, Benjamin is going to Welder onto his Reshiram and Charizard. He's got a Jirachi with an Escape Board, too. So he's good to take a knockout on this Dedenne GX. But if Benjamin takes this knockout with Flare Strike, he is just serving up his Reshiram and Charizard. to this Mewtwo and Mew, who can easily Flare Strike for knockout. So it's going to feel bad if he does that. Instead, Benjamin decides to pass. And I think that's a fair pass from Benjamin, saying, like, okay, um, I'll be, I want to be the one to take the first big knockout. And, you know, Benjamin puts himself in a pretty decent spot to do that. Now Kyle is in this weird position like okay what do I do in order to try and keep Benjamin from taking a big knockout on my Mewtwo right? Not only does Kyle need an extra energy onto his Mewtwo and Mew in order to deal 300 damage with Flare Blitz GX, he also needs to find a way to get this to Denny GX out of the active position and if Benjamin had taken the knockout on the Dedenne GX, he would have just made that much easier for Kyle. Kyle would have just gotten his, you know, Mewtwo right on into the active position, and you know, Benjamin would have definitely been on the back foot. So I think Benjamin made a head-up play by deciding not to attack with his Rush Ram and Charizard. Kyle's going to attach fourth energy onto his Mewtwo and Mew. And going in with the Day-Day change. Going to see six new cards. He'd like to find a switch. He's finding a bunch of Jirachis. And I don't think I see a switch in his hand right now. He's going to use Cherish Ball. Take a look at the deck. And 
and he's going to get a Macargo GX. Probably use Giant Hearth to discard it, get some fire energies out of the deck. But I don't believe that there's a switch, so it's going to be another turn of waiting for the big attack to come, right? I mean, like, like I said, both of these powerhouse tag team Pokemon just jockeying for position back and forth, getting energy attached to them. They're both capable of dealing 300 damage, but which one is going to strike first? I don't think that Kyle is able to attack, so it's going to be Benjamin going in with the Poke Gear. Finds the uh, skateboard, and there is a welder. The welder is the card that he needs in order to get enough energy onto this Reshiram and Charizard to double blaze GX for 300. But does Benjamin have the Nine Tails also? If he's going to be using Welder to put two more energy onto this Reshiram Charizard. then I would hope that he is going to at least take a big knockout with it, right? If two more energy get put onto the Reshizard and Benjamin's not able to gust up Kyle's Mewtwo and Mew, uh, I think Ben has been able to get away with, you know, passing with the Reshiram Charizard on the bench for this long. Uh, I think that that all ends next turn. Uh, Benjamin cannot afford to pass another turn. With the Reshiram Charizard on the bench. This time, at this point, Kyle has had way too much time to dig through his deck and most assuredly will have a great catcher as well as enough energy in play to take a knockout on this Charizard. So we're going to see the Gust, or not the Gust, we're going to see the Ninetales come down. Uh, Benjamin does have Welder in his hand too, but is he going to find enough fire energy to actually be able to bring up this Mewtwo? If he can, I think this game is a wrap. Um, but I also, you know, are keenly aware that Benjamin does not have unlimited resources. Um, he may have to eventually go in with Victini Prism Star if he starts to run really low on energy, and I know he has played quite a few. All right, Weldering, two energy on the Reshiram Charizard. Does he find the energy? He does not seem to have the energy in his hand, but he does have Cherish Ball, so he could day-day change. Oh, and it looks like he is playing a search card, getting the Dedenne, but I think he's only got one fire energy left in deck so he might not have enough energy to actually gust he's counting all right how many energy i got in the discard pile maybe a couple energy in the discard pile really tough situation for ben and i didn't see the victini prism star actually and Ben, as we saw, had to Dene away three custom catchers. So Ben's just going to pass. At this point, I am feeling really nervous for Ben that he is not going to get to take this knockout that he wants with Reshiram and Charizard. Kyle is able to find one of those great catchers out of his deck this turn. It's going to be all bad. I think Kyle's going to search his deck with Tag Call, bring out two tag team supporters, Cynthia and Caitlin, it looks like, and maybe Mallow and Lana. I would guess. No, there's another Mewtwo and Mew. So with Cynthia and Caitlin, he's going to get to dig three cards deeper. He's already got energy in his hand that he can use to manually retreat the Dedenne GX to get his Mewtwo and Mew into play. He's already got enough energy on the Mewtwo and Mew in order to take down the Reshiram Charizard threat on Benjamin's side of the board. Does he find that great catcher that he needs? He's going to be using Cynthia and Caitlin, 
getting a welder back from the discard pile and drawing three cards. Does he find the great catcher? And I don't believe he does. He does have one more bench spot open, though. He's going to switch into Jirachi, who has an escape board. Five more chances to find the great catcher to end all great catchers, and I don't believe he sees it. There is no great catcher in those five cards, or else he would have taken it so fast. Instead, he's got another welder. At this point... I think Kyle could honestly afford to Dedene this hand away and just go for the great catcher off the day day change. I think if he takes out that Charizard, I think there's almost no way he loses. I don't think Benjamin actually runs enough fire energy in order to knock out a Mewtwo with a Victini Prism Star. But I guess... Kyle doesn't know if Benjamin runs Megalopunny. I did not see Megalopunny in Benjamin's deck. So I think we've got some bird eye knowledge here of what Ben does and doesn't have. And Kyle probably doesn't want to waste all of his resources going for a chance at a great catcher and then getting punished for it. But we'll see. Assessing the damages right now. All right, what do I got? What do I have access to? And it looks like Kyle is choosing to attempt another Stellar Wish, but he doesn't have another switch in hand, I don't think. He does find the Great Catcher finally. However, he is not going to be able to attack this turn since he already switched. Unless he's got another switch, it's not happening. Which he may, I, I don't know. He's got a big hand over there with lots of cards in it. All right. Does Kyle have another switch? I don't believe so. It appears as if he does not. And that's going to be yet another pass from Kyle, an ultimate stalemate between these two players with their big tag team Pokemon. Neither of them taking a swing. Looks like Kyle is considering using Great Catcher. I really don't recommend that without attacking. I mean, that's such a high risk play if Ben just had a switch then he could just switch right out of it I really don't like the gust and pass uh, I think Kyle should have just waited on the catcher if Ben plays out of this with the switch then that that catcher is just completely wasted balls back in Ben's court Ben, I believe, does not have enough fire energy left in deck in order to gust with this Nine Tails. So I think he's locked in to having to attack with the Reshazard with six energy on it, which is tough because he's got no gust options. And I don't think he has any great catchers in deck. I mean, we see he does play custom catchers but he's got a large amount of custom catchers discarded and he's going to go for a day day change and he knows that he's only got one fire energy left in deck and that's the fire energy right there and I don't see any sort of uh, energy recovery or anything like that It looks like he's just hamming through his resources at this point. He's only got a few cards left in deck. All of this buildup, and Ben just has to take 
a knockout on a Jirachi with Flare Strike. That feels so bad. And we know that Kyle has the knockout on this Reshizard next turn. I do think that Kyle needed to wait on that Great Catcher. I mean, this is like a... You, you never Great Catcher there. Preemptively, there's no point. But Kyle is not going to get punished for that play at all. Instead, he's going to get to proceed. Take his top tag. Big one hit knockout incoming with Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX. Kyle going to discard Megalopunny and Jigglypuff. And he's going to be. He actually deals a lot of damage with Jumping Balloon as well, though. I think that. He is going for the Flare Blitz GX, copying Charizard GX out of his discard pile to deal 300 damage. Very efficient attacker for this Mewtwo and Mew deck, and a great way to deal 300 damage, which is extremely relevant because most tag team Pokemon have just under 300 hit points. However, if you took a look at the spoilers, for the new Sword and Shield Pokemon. Pokemon V Max are going to be having like 300 plus hit points, like 330, 340 hit points. Pokemon V Max are going to be able to withstand attacks like Double Blaze GX for 300, which is crazy. Absolutely crazy. Oh, but what's not to like? That's always fun. What's not to like about a Pokemon with 300 hit points? <laughs> Kyle's got all of everything he needs accounted for. I hope he uses Charizard GX to deal 300 damage and not this Macargo GX, but, you know, we will certainly see. I think Charizard GX is the correct play here. Save that energy that you work so hard to manually attach to your Mewtwo. Looks like Kyle is going to Welder. Choosing to throw another fire onto his... Another couple of fires onto his Mewtwo. And then we'll get to draw some cards. Uh, at this point, he might be choosing to use Mikarko. I don't think he should do that. I think he could, should most certainly. Uh, looks like <laughs> Benjamin is scooping it up. Oh my gosh, Benjamin's... Oh, he, he did run Great Catcher in the deck. And his Victini was prized. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, Benjamin uh, actually prized his Victini Prism Star and was looking for his Great Catcher to gust at the end of the game and like could not find it. Uh, that whole time. So really brutal draws there from Benjamin. Kyle Neal going to be emerging victorious. And wow, nobody ended up taking a knockout. We just had two players building up energy, building up energy, building up energy. And then finally, one player showed that they were going to take a knockout. And the other one was like, yeah, bro, you got it. <laughs> that's uh, that's how it goes sometimes. Anyways, Kyle Neal emerging victorious at the Fulgrip Games League Tournament 5-0 with his Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX deck. We're going to get Kyle back here for a quick interview. Before we peace out for the night, thank you guys all for being here. We'll be right back. All right, we got Kyle here. What, 5 0 tonight? Yes. Dang, with the Mewtwo and Mew deck looking pretty good. I mean, we saw you round one. Uh, how did your middle rounds go, the ones that we didn't get to see on stream? When you played, uh, uh, I guess. Two the, ADPs. A couple ADPs. How did those go? Uh, it was pretty close. I uh, ended up having to use uh, Miraculous Duo both games wow. to heal all the damage off. That's crazy. And then were you able to use the Greninja GX to hit through Caldeo? Is that a strategy you used, or did you not end up... Uh, I was actually able to just uh, uh, Venom shot around the Caldeos. That'll do it. Yeah. So I, I, they, they had the Denes on board both times, and I knocked them out, and then Venom shot twice uh, against my second one for two knockouts. Awesome stuff. So Mewtwo and Mew is still looking like a powerhouse in this format. How do you feel with the Tag Call Engine in the Mewtwo and Mew deck, having played it with and without the Tag Call Engine... How do you think that you're liking it with the tag call cards in it? I like the tag call engine. Um, it's not as fast-paced as uh, my other build that I had last 
uh, format, but right, With the acro like bikes it. and the polka gears and the welder every turn, right. I feel like after uh, this weekend, we should see a more refined list where maybe we'll see a more aggressive build again. For sure, definitely that possibility. Uh, I think that uh, you know the the speed of you know Mewtwo and Reshi's art has definitely kind of pushed those decks to the. Uh, the top of the bill there. So I think that's probably what we're going to see more of this weekend at Daytona. And then, you know, the slower decks, the Healy decks, uh, are kind of getting, you know, hated out by these big decks that can one-hit KO. Yeah. You know, turn after turn. Which we saw there, that that matchup there was just one big build-up to an eventual one-hit KO. And then... Yeah, I had to count uh, his cards. I was going to my cargo GX him. Oh, to mill his, <laughs> mill his deck out. He had, uh. he had six. <laughs> so I was going to uh, just use my cargo's Mill attack, five. And then... Uh, I was going to use uh, McCargo's uh, Lava Flow to knock out the Reshi's art and then just uh, Burning Magma the next next turn. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so he kind of realized that uh, he was, uh, he was yeah, in too deep. Yeah, the one turn he could have uh, gusted me up, but he he only had one energy left in deck. I know. I, I saw, yeah. And I didn't see that he had a great catcher in deck. Like I yeah. didn't realize that he had one great catcher available to him. So uh, he was short the energy to gust you, and then you were you yeah. you whiffed the gust on him on that one stellar wish as well. He so. Had, he had three uh, custom catchers, the nine tails, and a great catcher. <laughs> Lots of gusting. I know. I saw he had to discard three custom catchers in the first turn of the game. So that was uh, that was really tough. Yo, what's up, Warrior with the Twitch Prime sub? Yo, thank you for that Twitch Prime sub. Appreciate the support. All right, Kyle, congrats on the win. And uh, hopefully you have a nice Thanksgiving with the family, man. Thank you. You too. Yep. And that's it for the Full Group Games League Tournament. Thank you guys all so much for hanging out tonight. Make sure to check out FullGripGames.com. Singles. Uh, sealed product, accessories, things like that. T-shirts even. We got T-shirts up on the website. Make sure to check those out, fullgripgames.com. And that's it for the league tournament. Everybody have a nice Thanksgiving with the family. I'll be back on Monday with some more Pokemon trading card game online action. If you're going to Daytona, good luck and, uh, and best wishes for me. Y'all take it easy and have a good one. Peace.